Okay, everybody, I'm back, and I've got a lot of different projects that I want to show you. I don't know if I'm going to get them all done, but because we know I've only got 30 minutes, but we'll give it a try. What I don't get done, I'll come back and show you. So I've tried to do as much ahead as I can without actually doing it on camera because that's it just takes up so much time to do it that way. So when you are going to cut your template pieces out, if your fabric is, your fabric, if your paper is thin like this, you probably want to um, back it onto a heavier weight paper. Depends on what you're going to use it for, but if you find that you're going to do that, here's the way I suggest it. Go ahead and trace your images out onto whatever um, background paper that you're gonna that you want them to be cut out of. You're gonna just very roughly cut around them. These happen to be scraps, both of these. You're gonna very rough, roughly cut or tear around them. And then you are going to glue them onto a heavier weight paper okay just like that and you'll fill it up I only showed you two but you would fill it up go ahead use your glue stick go all the way out glue it on once it's all dry then you can cut them all out then you've got it on a, it's much easier to do it that way than to, to cut it out of the lighter weight than the heavier weight and then try and get them to match up. This way you don't have to worry about it and you're only cutting once. So that's the first thing I wanna show you. Second thing I wanna show you is how different ways that you can use your template pieces. So because this is sewing um, related, you might um, use some of these shapes as button cards. So here's the, the jars, the jar, and wouldn't that look cute with those buttons sewed on, uh, hand sewn on there. Same thing over here. They could be over here on this or on the little teapot like that or on this sewing basket. That would be cute. The other thing I wanted to show you about the sewing basket was that I, and I did not put this in the template, but it's very easy, something that you can very easily do. I just cut a shape out to look like a um, quilt or fabric or stitching so that it makes, look, it makes it look like it's hanging out of the basket. You could glue it on could stitch it on whatever uh, whichever way you like it but that wouldn't that be cute okay so that's that next thing I want to show you is how to make a belly band pocket it's actually a belly band double pocket now let me tell you what a belly band is a belly band is a band that goes across a page in the center and it's open on both sides it's open all the way around so it's going to be fastened like that and then you can tuck cards or you know journaling cards whatever in there but in this case we're going to make it into a pocket as you can see here okay so you're going to take an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper and you are going to fold it in half lengthwise <clears throat> then you're going to take one side and you're going to fold it over to the center and then you're going to burnish it down really good. You're going to do the same when you fold it in half. 
you're going to burnish it down really good with your bone folder. Fold it up to the line. You don't want to go over the line. You just want to go up to it because if you go past that, it's going to catch and it'll fold that paper. You don't want to do that. Burnish it good. The next side, you don't want to go all the way up. You want to leave, that looks like that's an inch. So you're going to leave an inch down and you're going to fold it over. Okay, so as you can see, you've got a pocket here. And when you put it into your book, you're going to actually end up with two pockets. So you're going to cut it to fit whatever your page is, okay? You're going to glue it here and here at the edge, of, at, the, at the bottom edge and the top edge of your page, nowhere else. Then you're going to have this pocket and you're still going to have your belly band. Okay. Got any questions? You can let me know on that. Okay. Let me tell you another thing about this. So you can use this very same concept as a pocket. Now, obviously, you're not going to want it that long. You would only want it as long as whatever, however wide your page is. And you would cut it. You would put it on there. And then you would end up, you'd actually have three pockets. Well, no, you're going to only have two. This pocket and that pocket. But when you, when you glue it down, you're going to glue it on three sides like that or sew it. And, uh, you want to make sure you glue this part down too. And then you'll have a pocket here and a pocket here. Okay. Next thing I want to show you is how to make a scissor holder out of a toilet paper roll or paper towel. This was a toilet paper roll and I did not, I, it, I cut part of it off. You need to know how tall your scissors are going to be. So you would check that and you would cut it off um, to whatever length that you want that to be. In this case, I cut that much off. So if you're using a, a paper towel roll, you're just going to put that on there. And uh, however, you don't want it to go down too far. You want it to stick up some. So you go down a little bit. I think maybe I might have that marked. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. And then you would cut it off there. Then you would take your glue or washi tape, whatever is round, and you're going to trace around it. And actually, you're not going to do that yet. So disregard. Erase that part. First thing you're going to do is cover it. So you're going to cut it first. You're going to cover it in fabric or paper. In this case, I used fabric. So you're going to cut your paper to meet, or your fabric, to meet here in the center and wrap around both sides. You will glue this part first, wrap it around, add glue on this side, smooth it down, bring this around, and glue it and cut it. You're going to put a small bead of glue at the bottom on the inside. Okay. You're going to put a piece of fabric or um, paper on the inside. And you can see I didn't go all the way to, to, the, to the bottom because you don't need to. And you're only going to need that much covered and a little, little more. So glue that in there. 
however wide this is. Again, you're not going to put it over on this side. I mean, you can if you want to. I didn't. Then, you're going to use washi tape or your glue, something that's round about this size. You'll use your pencil. You'll cut it out. Voila. You've got a scissor holder. And then you can decorate this after you've finished. And it doesn't matter what scissors. So like if you wanted to use these scissors, it, the length doesn't matter as long as you've got a paper towel holder and it doesn't go, your scissors aren't wider than um, the width that's flat. Okay. That's that. Next thing I want to show you is this cute little project. And this is, um, where is it at? Okay. So this is what it looks like when it is finished. It's a little dangle. Okay. So I have taken, I've got several different dangles here. I have taken a, just a variety of different things. So for example, this is a picture out of my inspiration. Let me tell you what this is. These are called bulb, B-U-L-B, -B, bulb pins. You can buy them on Amazon by the bajillions. So when you open it up, it allows you to put all your little goodies on there. Okay, so you might want to start with the clothespin and notice how they're all different lengths and sizes. Here's, a, here's the picture that I got out of my inspiration book. Here's a little piece of lace. Here's a word. And here's the shank button. And then you close it, and you've got a dangle. So in this case, again, I'm using one of the shapes. Let's use a, this is a uh, tag. I've got a tag punch, and I made that tag. Okay, this is just a strip of fabric. some words on there if you want. That kind of covers it up, doesn't it? And maybe a pin. Okay. Here's another idea. Here's a, here's one of the shapes. But you could also, if you've got like a, a punch, a circle punch, you could use a circle punch. And here's a teapot or a pitcher. Let's put the long thing on first. This is a, ta a tag. Circle. Here's a ribbon. This is very 70s, isn't it? And your word. Oh, and another button. And there you go. There's another one. Okay, so those are fun to make. And then you can just use this bulb pin, open it back up, and uh, have the bulb part wherever the, um, where all your goodies are. And then this is the part that'll go through, you know, whatever it is that you're, uh, you're going to fasten it to a tab or a piece of lace, whatever. And I'll show you as we begin to decorate and, and start using all of our elements, I'll show you how to use that. Okay, here is a um, needle thread, what, needle threader holder. <laughs> wow, I had to think that one through. Needle threader holder. 
I am using one of the images. This is happens to be the lamp image, but you could use uh, a tag. You could use words. You could use one of these, you know, uh, cute pictures that you get out of your inspiration. All kinds of things. And the only thing that you do is, you see, you've got those two slits. Just cut those two slips and slide two slits and slide your uh, needle threader in them. And then all these things, once you make them, we're going to put all these deals that we make in pockets like this. Okay, here's using the threader, or <laughs> here's using the thread shaped um, image template. And I've just wound some thread on there. We'll put that in a pocket. Okay, here is a um, paper clip that it's really cute and we could you, know, you can clip onto the top of one of your pages. It's just a strip of fabric, a piece of lace. You could use paper there if you'd rather. Um, some people sew across it. <clears throat> A hand stitch would be really cute. Um, you could hand stitch a little flower on there or a button or both to kind of hold this in place. And then you'll put that on the top of one of your pages. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to show you is how to make a matchbook um, a matchbook, uh, paper holder notebook. Okay. So you are going to cut a piece of paper, eight and a half long by three inches wide. You're going to fold up the bottom a half an inch. You're going to fold down the top uh, three and a half to three and three quarters, but you want it to be just enough that you can tuck that in like you would have the old fashioned matchbooks. See how it's tucked there. You can either glue a small bead right here at the, at the fold, or you can put a staple there because that's the way the matchbooks work. Either way, then you are going to cut or tear different pieces of paper and they need to be six by three or less then you're going to fold those in half you're going to put them inside of your book your matchbook and obviously that would be closed and then you're going to take a ribbon or a piece of lace, a fabric scrap, whatever suits your fancy, and you're going to put it on here and then you're going to tie it. And then once you do that, you have an opportunity to decorate the front of your matchbook or even the pages. If you wanted to put some kind of little frou-frou on the pages, you could do that. Okay, so that's it. Now, the, the last thing that I want to tell you about is washi tape. So, you can buy washi tape, and it comes on a roll like this, and washi tape is considered a temporary tape because it comes off very easily, okay? And um, as you can see, it's not very, it, it tears very easily. So, but it's decorative in nature. So there's a lot of things that you can do with washi tape. If you want it to be permanent on your page, you need to glue it. You're in, you need to take your uh, glue stick and put it on the back before you adhere it to your page. Because otherwise, it won't be long before this is going to be coming up. So, you can also make your own washi tape. So, these are strips of paper. 
that I, as I was disassembling my book, I had strips of paper. And remember yesterday, or whatever day it was, we used them to sew uh, long skinny clusters. Well, now you can use them as washi tape. So, typically, a good way to use washi tape is to just layer it. A lot of layering in, uh, in junk journals. So, you just kind of layer it however you like the way it looks. And so, it's just, it's just a way to um, bring a pop of color to your page um, or your cover, whatever you're putting it on and uh, using all your scraps so i think that that is everything that i wanted to show you yay i got through everything um if you have any questions please let me know i know i went through it kind of quick um but you know i wanted i had several things that i wanted to show you and i have other things that i'm going to show you as well but uh i didn't feel like i would have enough time to um to show you everything um, this evening. So anyway, uh, I think that'll do it. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.